In the last class, we created a Python notebook and we named it Lesson 1. Open that notebook using Jupyter. We call this block a cell. A notebook cell is where you write your code. And a cell uses the kernel that you choose when you started your notebook. A kernel is nothing but a program that runs your code. In our case, you started Python 3 as your kernel. So that means you can write Python code in your code cells. Since your initial notebook has only one empty cell in it, that notebook can't really do anything. Thus, to verify that everything is working as it should, let's go ahead and add some Python code to the cell and try running its contents. Let's try adding the following code to that cell. Print hello Jupyter. Running a cell means that you will execute the cell's contents. To execute a cell, you can just select the cell and click the run button that is in the row of buttons along the top. If you prefer using your keyboard, you can just press shift plus enter. When I ran the code above, the output looked like this. When you run a cell, you will notice that there are some square braces next to the word into the left of the cell. The square braces will autofill with the number that indicates the order that you ran the cells. For example, if you open a fresh notebook and run the first cell at the top of the notebook, the square braces will fill with the number 1. The Jupyter notebook has several menus that you can use to interact with your notebook. The menu runs along the top of the notebook just like menus do in other applications. Try discovering the objective of each option in the menu. One of the most important things to do when you are programming is adding comments. Comments are lines that exist in computer programs that are ignored when you run the program. Including comments in programs makes code more readable for humans as it provides some information or explanation about what each part of a program is doing. A comment in Python starts with the hash character and extends to the end of the physical line. Let's try it. In the next video, we will learn what is Markdown and how to create it.